Hi, this is John Dingwall. This week I've been in Singapore for the F1 Rocks concerts, the first series of concerts to tie in with Grand Prix races around the world. And the gigs included some A-list stars, including Beyonce, NERD, Simple Minds and Black Eyed Peas. The band, featuring Will I Am, have been number one in the American charts for a record-breaking 25 weeks with I Got a Feeling. <laughs> At Sunday night's race in Singapore, I met Will I Am backstage, in fact standing with me in the garage with Nicole Scherzinger of Lewis Hamilton's McLaren team as they prepared him for his big win at the Grand Prix. And Will told me that his band are going to sample the cars from the Grand Prix and use that on the next big track that they release. This is my week, couldn't get any better, having met up with Black Eyed Peas, uh, caught up with Jim Kerr in his hotel suite for a big chat about his life in uh, the wake of their latest album, Graffiti Soul. And then it was off to the race itself, the Grand Prix, the night race, the only night race worldwide for the Grand Prix in Singapore. Uh, three billion watts of electricity lighting up the track. I found myself so close to uh, Lewis Hamilton, the world champion's car. In fact, if I was any closer, I would have been in the car with him. As it was, I was able to see the action that takes place to make his car the fastest car in the world, if you like. While there, I got a real taste of the excitement and why people become addicted to the Grand Prix, why people travel all over the world to see every Formula One race. The noise is something I'd love to bottle. It's outstanding. And I was delighted to see Lewis win the race. And of course, I also met up with Jensen Button, who is still in position to become this year's world champion. And the reason F1 Rocks is such a big success is that the man who dreamed it up, the man who's come up with F1 Rocks, is the same person, Paul Morrison, who dreamed up the idea for Tea in the Park some 16 or 17 years ago. And Paul told me uh, that it's the same business model that he's using to come up with a series of F1 Rock concerts. He plans another six F1 Rocks concerts at various Formula Ones around the world next year, maybe building up to double that in 2011. Now Paul, uh, tell me all about F1 Rocks, how did it all come about? Well, I guess we started talking about it about a year ago and started having a lot of meetings with Bernie Eccleston with my chairman and we decided there was probably something to be done. We're the biggest music company in the world, F1's the biggest annual sporting television event, so I guess only the World Cup or the Olympics, probably, probably bigger, but obviously every four years. If we took our big music mega stars and mixed that with, um, with F1, you're going to get something pretty special. The F1 Rocks concerts, which also featured uh, No Doubt, uh, back with Gwen Stefani, are being uh, packaged and broadcast to over 180 countries worldwide making the shows even bigger some say than the Grammys or the MTV Awards in terms of the total audience worldwide who see them and F1 Rocks television shows were hosted by none other than socialite, tweeter, actress Lindsay Lohan who told me uh, in between takes that she is a little bit sick of all the paparazzi action that she has been getting and in the words of Geta Garbo or to paraphrase the the silver screen actress, Lindsay, just wants to be a Lohan. As you can imagine, I thoroughly enjoyed my life in the fast lane with F1 Rocks and Formula One, and I'm hoping to be back in the future where I can show you how F1 Rocks develops into one of the great brands for music concerts around the globe, and uh, hopefully we'll see even bigger and better glamour at future F1 Rocks gigs.